Hey Pheasant Fanatics, Dustin here with North Point Kennels. Today we're going to be covering tips on dog safety in extreme conditions, what gear has worked well for me, and gun management anytime you're dealing with late season, very cold, very thick snow. Following this quick tutorial, we're going to have a video that actually outlines some of the uh, the hunt that we had where we faced a lot of these challenges and difficulties. Now, I do need to put some caveats around this video that this is in my experience, what I have found to work the best and what I am okay with in terms of my hunting experience in correlation with my friends and my dogs. Um, in the context here, I, I almost always hunt with German short hairs. I do find that there is some variance based on the size of those German short hairs um, or also the age of them. Uh, we do hunt in as low as negative 15 to even negative 25 without windshield. I have run into scenarios where I'm actually having more difficulties keeping my hands and my feet warm rather than my dog, and my dog at, at those times never had a vest on. Um, and a lot of times I found that as long as they are moving and as long as they are staying dry, they tend to do uh, usually quite a bit better than me. Anytime we're transporting the dog, we personally use Rufflin kennels, um, and we then we have a thermal cover around it. Um, especially with German short hairs, they exude heat outside of their body. Um, so I, I find that it actually, as long as you conceal the heat in that kennel, it will keep them warm as you're transitioning from field to field or when you're transitioning home. Hen, hen, good boy. That's a hen, right? Good boy, Dre. Here. I could have shot at it. It was low, but good pops. It's hard to find a lot of documentation or sites that really talk about what the recommendation is for um, how cold it's allowed to be or, or what it's capable of. Um, I've, in my own personal experience, I feel incredibly comfortable with my dogs being able to hunt in negative 10, negative 15 degrees. And I always keep a close eye on them. I try to make sure um, they're not showing that they're favoring a paw or anything like that because that is an area that tends to be more sensitive. Uh, but most of the time, uh, my dogs are doing better than I am. And around negative 20, negative 25, even if the dog is doing well, that's just kind of my line of saying, I'm good, uh, this isn't worth it. We'll, we'll go out another day when it's a little bit warmer. Didn't fire. I think it was frozen. The safety wouldn't move up or down and it showed safety. So I put my hand on it and heated it. And now it'll move. When it comes to gun management, um, a lot of the regular rules apply um, in terms of like keeping your gun dry, making sure that you're cleaning it frequently, etc. Now, a couple things that are especially important is anytime we start getting more humidity or more snow, um, I will basically wipe down my gun after every single hunt. Otherwise, you'll start noticing either some jamming issues <clears throat> that it's not cycling shells well, or you can run into a situation where you're noticing rust on the gun. Um, so even more critical than normal, I I make sure that we we uh, wipe down our guns after every single hunt where I want it everything is perfect a long trek it's so helpful having two dogs though because they both lost sense a couple times right right Dre and Wes tracked it all the way through they split. Dre was on the right track. Flush it in front of his nose. I pull up, pull the trigger. Nothing happens. Oh, good. Pull the trigger again. Nothing happens. Open up the barrel. Let's see if it's a dud shell or yeah. something. Not a dud shell. I look at this thing here. Yeah. And it's fully frozen over. Yeah. And I think the safety got into a barely up safety position and froze. Yeah. Yeah. My gun's jammed. Done? Yeah, there's 
dirt and ice and stuff packed in. You want me to clean it like I did I in mine? I can't get it out. Yeah, let's do this. Take this. It's, it's, it's fire right now. Okay. Yeah. There's dirt and ice packed into both barrels. And I can't get it out. I pulled like three of those branches out there out of the ground and tried to dislodge it. Dislodge it. And then uh because I I dropped it because my hands were anything. Here clear. Okay. So Dusty title this one be late season mistake. <laughs> That's identified birds. Late, late season realities. Yeah. Late season birds, frozen guns. I like a, a shotgun made. Hey. <coughs> Here's Wes. Here's Nelly. Hen, hen! The topic of gear, um, in terms of what clothes are you wearing um, and what works well, this is an interesting topic because there's a lot of money that could be spent around gear. And several years ago when I started getting really big into hunting, um, I didn't have a lot of money. So a lot of times what I did is I bought relatively cheap gear. Um, however, I would run a lot of layers. And a kind of a sneaky trick that I figured out here is as long as you've got some exterior pants that are gonna keep you dry, uh, a lot of times instead of buying the really high-end stuff that was thinner or would keep you warmer, um, I would actually use like nurse's scrubs or sweatpants or something like that underneath it. It worked very, very similar actually. Um, and it was still allowed for a lot of mobility when you're out hunting and you're walking through the fields and whatnot. So in the context of kind of uh, keeping your legs and your, your upper body warm, um, I would a lot of times either use thin layers um, and then I would also use those sweatpants or scrubs. I don't... I'm sorry. You guys need to be on the dog, not me. Hey, Dre. Great work, Dre. Dre, here. Give me a bump. Good boy. Ah, the dog worked so hard and so well. I screwed up. Wes was on point back there, so you were like pointing over here, and I was like, an area that I do put money into, being very sincere and honest, and if you were to put money into something first and early, I would say put money into boots and socks. They're probably the most important things in my opinion. You can get pretty warm pairs of socks or pretty pretty um, solid pairs of socks for relatively cheap. And boots, um, if you can get them during the off season and whatnot, um, I, I use danners and I actually use them for pheasant hunting, deer hunting, elk hunting, mule deer hunting, etc. Um, and they're really, really dynamic in my, in my experience. Um, and not only are they keeping me warm enough in all of these situations, uh, they're not overheating me either, so I'm not sweating. And then... Um, and, when you walk as much as I do type of thing, you don't want to be getting your, your feet calloused or, or having problems there too. So if there's a first place to put money in and then do workarounds for the other ones, I would say boots and socks are really where you want to do it. There, 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 rooster! I knew it. Had to be a rooster too. Good boy, Dre. Oh, you didn't get to shoot it either? Dre, here! I hope that this information was helpful to you. I had a very difficult time finding recommendations or information from kind of an upland game perspective. So I hope you enjoy this video. This has some of the challenges of the things that I've already talked about today. Uh, I look forward to you uh, seeing our video, giving some feedback and looking forward to the next video. So thanks everybody, enjoy.